we're going to take a look at a legal problem called different ways to add parentheses. So given a string expression of numbers and operators, return all possible results from computing all the different possible ways to group numbers and operators uh, together. So you might return the answer in any order. So you can see here we have an example, right? So you can see this, this function that we're going to write, it takes a string expression and we want to return a list of integer as a result of how many um, numbers were right basically like how many uh, possible ways to group numbers and operator together right so you can see here one way we can do is basically we group you know the first two numbers right so two one once we get the you know the, the total value of two minus one we can use that which is one minus one right so at the, at the end we just get the, the total value of one minus one which is zero right the other way we can do is we can group those two ones together and this will give us zero. So two minus zero, right? Two minus the remaining value, which is gonna be two, right? So you can see we have two values. So we basically try to keep track of all the sum, right? So we have a zero here, we have a two here. So at the end, we're returning that in a list of integer. Now you can see we have another complicated example here. So you can see we have two times three minus four times five. So you can, you can see here one way we can do it is we, we can first get the sum or get the pro, uh, value of this, which is 20, right? Once we get that, we can get three minus 20, which is negative 17. And then negative 17 times two, right? Which is gonna be negative 34, right? So that's one way we can do it. The other way we can do is maybe like we can, you know, start to group by just this first, right? Which is 20, right? And then we can also group those two first. So that's six minus 20, this will give us six minus 20 will be will be negative 14, right? So that's one way we can do it. The other way we can do is maybe we can group those two, right? Once we group those two together, you can see this minus this will give us ne uh, negative one, right? So if we have two times negative one times five, right? So in this case, what's gonna happen is we can group those two together. So that will give us negative two times five, right? Or in this case, we can also group two times negative five, right? This will turn into negative five. So in this case, two times negative five will also give us negative 10. So that's why you can see we have two negative 10 here, right? It doesn't matter if you group those two together or those two together, the end result will give us two negative fives here. So, and then the other thing we can also group is we can also group by this one right here. So let's say we group two times three first, which will give us six, right? So six minus four times five. Okay, and then well, what else we can do is maybe we can group those two together. So that will give us two times five. So this will give us 10, right? And you might also be thinking like, okay, what if what if we just group, you know, like try to group four times five together? Maybe we have like six minus 20, right? But you can see six minus 20, we already done it. We already done it like right here, right? Because you can see here, uh, in this case, six, two, two times three is six, four times five, is, which is 20. So six minus 20, six minus 20 is negative 14. We already done it. So we cannot have, you know, duplicate group together, right? So in this case, it's pretty much, we already grouped those two together. And we also have to group those two together. So we already done it. So we don't have to do the same uh, group together, right? Basically we can have the same result value, right? But we cannot have the same grouping. So in this case, how can we be able to solve this problem? So let's, before let's talk about how we solve this problem, let's look at the constraints, right? So the constraints you can see here, the uh, expression dot length, which is the size of the strings between one to 20. And uh, for the string, we only have addition, subtraction, and multiplication. We do not have division at all. So in this case, uh, and it, so basically based on the constraints, right? Like there could also be a situation where the expression or the input uh, that we have could be, for example, maybe like just one number, right? Like one, right? If it's just one, then the output should also be one, right? So that's something that the question didn't really, you know, that we want to clarify uh, before doing this question, right? If it's just one num, if just one value, right? If there's only one value, there's no addition, no subtraction at all, then we want to return the same value as it is, right? Uh, but in this case, we want to return a list of list of integers. So in this case, there's going to be one. And let's say if input is, you know, let's say if the input is equal to, um, in this case, two minus one, right? So the output should just be like one, right? Because there's no way that we can group. The only way we can group is two minus one, right? 
So in this case, you can see these are some other examples. Now let's take a look at how we can be able to solve this problem. So the brute force approach to solve this problem is basically we can try with all the combinations that we have, right? We can try with each and every single substring. Um, basically, for example, in this case, let's say we're breaking the string into half, right? Let's say if I group those two strings together, right? Or in this case, those elements together and those elements together, right? And then I basically say, this is the group that we have, right? Maybe we can try with this combination and, uh, and basically add our total value onto like a result list or something, right? So in this case, if we were to DFS down to this path, uh, what's gonna happen is you can see here we have Fn, right? In this case, we're going to call this function. We want to continue, you know, uh, try with all the combination for the left substring and we want to try all the combination for the right substring so you can see here we're going down to two so fn2 is basically just two right and and for fn uh, in this case the function if we call the function for the for the right substring in this case we have one minus one in this case we can continue breaking because you can see there's an operator right if there's an operator we can continue to split in half continue to split in half until we only have like just one number or in this case one uh, single integer value and then we can basically just like return that integer uh, list of integer value for this sub for this string right back to the uh, original or the root function and then in this case you can see one minus one it's going to be zero and this is going to be two two minus in this case the operator is a minus sign so two minus zero it's going to be two right so in this case you can see if we go down to this branch the value will give us two okay if we go down to this branch so let's say if we were to go down this branch, let's say if I group those two values together and this together, right? So based on this operator, let's split the string into the left half and the right half. So it's kind of similar to how we did it in the warp break problem. Uh, you can see here, we basically have two minus one, right? Two minus one will give us one. And then in this case for one, it's just one, right? So in this case, two minus one is one, one minus one is zero. So in this case, this, uh, uh, this path will give us a zero or in this case, because one minus one is zero, right? So you can see here, we have two combinations. So let's say we have another example, right? So let's say we have two times three minus four times five. So in this case, what we can do is that we can basically uh, group the left substring, right? And the right substring um, together, and then basically try to come up with all the, you know, all the, all the, all the possible combinations we can come up with for each and every single operator like we're trying to uh, go down to all the combinations that we can come up with right so you can see for each and every single operator that we have right maybe we can just do like what we what we exactly did on or break problem which we break the string uh, in half right so based on this index right here in this case we know this is the operator we can split the string the left left substring and then as well as the right substring and then what we can do is that we can basically try to try to calculate what are the total values of you know of each and every single parentheses that we add right or in this case and every uh, every time we group a value together like what are some what are the total value right so in this case you can see we, we have on the left we have two right so this will this function will return us two and then for our right we have three minus four times five uh, in this case you can see for each and we do the same thing for each and every single operator we continue to split the strain in half so we have three in this case you can see three this function will return us three and then we group four five together and then three individually together right so in this case you can see four times five will give us 20 uh, and, and in this case you can see this will be three minus right because this this is a minus symbol uh 20 so three minus 20 will give us what will give us uh in this case will give us 17 right and then we can also try with another combination which is three and four together and then five individually. So we have a negative one here and then five, right? So this will give us what? So this will give us um, negative five, right? Because in this case, this is a multiplication symbol. So in this case, you can see that for this function, this will generate negative 17 and negative five, right? And here it will give us two. So what we can do is that we can try with all the combination, right? So you can see here, we one way we can do is we can group two together and then three, four together and five. Or in this case, you can see, uh, we can also group two together and then four, five together and three together by, by, by itself, right? So you can see we have two combinations if we group those, uh, you know, those elements together and this element together, right? So in this case, you can see we're gonna get two times 
negative 17 and two times negative five, right? So you can see we're trying with all the same, all each and every single combinations that we can come up with, right? So in this case, uh, once we try all the combinations, we're gonna add it onto the result list that we're gonna return, right? To back to the root level. So once we back to the root level, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try with another combination, right? So maybe this one and this one right here. So two times three, which is six, four times five, which is 20. So in this case, it's gonna be a list, right? So a list of this and that. So six times 20, which is basically, uh, in this case is a minus symbol. So six minus 20 will give us uh, negative 14, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, return, you know, a uh, list of just only negative 14 in it. And then we're gonna return back to the root level and we're gonna add that onto the, um, right? Basically add it onto the result list. So that's that. And then we're gonna backtrack and then we're going to try with another combination. Maybe like, for example, uh, let's say if I want to group those elements together and this element right here, right? So what's gonna happen then is we're just going to see, you can see we continue to break the string down into smaller string, right? So you can see we have two. So we can basically group two together and three, four, right? Or we can basically like two, three together and four, right? And then you can see here we have two combinations uh, in this, or in this, yeah, in this case we have a list of size of two, right? Because in this case, you can see we have two times negative one, which is gonna be negative two. And we can also have like six minus four, which is gonna be two, positive two. So we, and here you can see it's just gonna be five, right? So it's gonna be negative two times five and two times five. So this will give us a negative, uh, negative 10 and positive 10, right? So we're just gonna return that back to here and we're gonna add it onto the result list, right? So basically you can see, this is basically how we solve the problem using brute force. And now let's take a look at the code. So in this case, you can see this is our brute force solution in code, right? So in this case, we have different ways to compute. So this is our main function. I basically add all of those symbols, right? All those characters onto the hash set. Um, and then what we do is we also have expression array. In this case, it's a character array, and then we basically convert the expression into a character array, right? So it'll be a lot easier to work with, and we're basically passing down like an index, right? So in this case, we're starting like, like basically our, our, our string is between zero to, in this case, the last character index of, the, of our uh, string, right? Expression, right? So what we do is we do our, perform our DFS function. It takes the start and the end. And then what we do is we, we have our result list that we want to return at the end. And then we iterate from the start to the end. And then what we can do is that if the current character is the operator, right? If it's operator, then what we can do is that we can just did what we exactly talked about, right? Maybe this is an operator. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna split the, we're gonna, you know, calculate, we're gonna DFS the left substring and then calculate the right substring, just like how we did it in the merge sort uh, video, right? We basically try to break the, break the array down into smaller pieces and then we f compute it and then we basically coming back up, right? So you can see this is, sorry, this is what we, what we did, right? We basically have operator set. We see that this character is a operator. Then what we do is we're gonna get the left list and the right list, right? So it's gonna be a list of integer and we try with all the combinations that we can do, right? In this case, maybe like, for example, just like I mentioned before, it could be like, in this case, there is a two and there's a negative two, right? So maybe like two times five and negative two times five, right? There's many combinations. We wanna to try to get all the combinations in there, right? So, and then what we do is that, let's say if there's a situation where it's just a number, it's just a number. For example, if it's just a two that we're passing in, then it's just basically the, the, the result, uh, the list of this, the size of this list is gonna be zero, right? So what we can do is we can basically just convert um, the current value, right? In this case, it's just two. If it's just two, we can just like convert it into a uh, you know an actual integer value and add it onto the result and then we can just return result at the end right so that's basically what we can do uh, let's say if there's a situation where we have a function right let's say we're, let's let's just call it DFS so let's say DFS and let's say this thing is 23 or something right in this case what we know we this is, this is not going to go here right because you in this case uh, the string that we're dealing with is 23. So let's say it's index zero to two or something, right? Or the last character, let's say is index one. So in this case, we go here, 
we know that in this case this is not an operator right so in this case 23 so this is not an operator and this is not an operator then there's nothing we added onto the result list so the result list is going to be empty so if it's empty we're just going to convert this this string right here into an integer value and add it onto the result right so it's pretty simple and then here basically i call this calculate function this calculate function basically uh, calculates those two value right it will give us the total value of those uh, it will give us a total a result value right so in this case in, based on the operator if it's a modification addition subtraction we do what we have to do right so if it's a modification we times addition we do plus subtraction we do minus in this case it will never go here because like the question states uh, it will only have uh, multiplication addition and subtraction right so this is the calculate function and then in this case this is how we basically solve this problem using the uh, the brute force approach right so this is how we solve the problem and uh, we know that the question says it's going to be between 1 and 20 but let's say in this case the length of expression dot length is a lot bigger maybe like 100 or maybe like a lot more right then in this case how can we be able to improve the time complexity we know that it's going to be exponential but how can we be able to improve further improve the time complexity um, in this case, let's say if the input scales, right? What we can do instead is maybe we can like try to cache this, right? You can see here, uh, we basically compute four times five multiple times, right? Right, or in this case, four times five multiple times. We know it's gonna return us a list with only 20 in it, but let's say if the input is a lot bigger, maybe like, like for example, dot, 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 right? In this case, we have to have a lot more branches that we're gonna go down to. So. In this case, what we can do is we can cache this. Um, so you can see here we have three minus four. It's already computed. Three minus four is already computed. Uh, we also have, let's see here, we also have like five already computed, right? Five already computed. We also have like two times three also computed, right? So you can see we have a lot of things, duplicate computation, right? If the input is very large, let's say maybe like, you know what we can do is that we maybe we can be able to cache this right so what we can do instead is we can basically create this function called get key and we have this cache which uh, the key is basically a uh, type string and then the value is a list of integers right because this is what the function is going to return right an integer uh, list of integer value right that's what we want to cache so in this case what we're going to do is that for our base case uh, we first get our key, right, which is basically take the start and the, and the end, right, this is our start, this is our end, right, we have put a comma in between, uh, and then what we do is we basically say that uh, we check to see if cache contains this key, right, if it does, we're going to return that, if it doesn't, we're going to compute it, and then we're going to save it onto our cache, and we're going to return that computer value, 